Hi everybody, this is Denise with purplepaperparadise.com and today I'm going to show you a little bit of a different way to do a print and cut using Make the Cut and the eCraft. You can also modify this to work with any die cutting machine that you work with, but if you are working with the eCraft then you would need to have your margins, um, your offset margins that um, I kind of talked about in a previous post so you know exactly where things are going to cut with your eCraft. So the first thing that I'm going to do here actually is I'm going to bring in an SVG. I'm going to use one from the Lettering Delights Oishi, I think that's how we say it, Oishi um, SVG set, sorry, I was <laughs> just looking at this. And I want to make sure I've got my use actual box checked and 72 DPI. And we're going to do this cute little popsicle. Go ahead and open that up. Now, we're going to go ahead and size him up to the size that we want. And actually, I think I'm going to leave him kind of small for this one. You'll notice that I've got my print box on, and that's because we are going to be doing some printing. So the first thing that I'm going to do, actually, is I'm going to move my layers and kind of separate them on my mat here. Um, I don't need to separate them too far because you'll see why in a minute. But I'm going to go ahead and select all of these and then I'm going to do a shadow layer on them. And let's see. I want to do a pretty good sized shadow layer. So we'll go ahead and accept that there. And I'm going to move these down because uh, I'm going to be doing this on my eCraft. And because of the rollers, I don't like to put anything in those first two inches um, that show up on the mat if I can avoid doing so. So right now, if you, we look over at our layer properties, we're going to see that we have a default layer and we also have a shadow layer. I am going to turn off the default layer and that is the things that we uh, are going to be cutting. And now you'll see I'll have my shadow layer. Now one of the things that I forgot to do when we applied our shadow layer was to apply a blackout so that these circles um, get filled in. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now by selecting the blackout button. And there you see that those eyes have disappeared. But now what we're going to do actually is that we're going to split these up because right now they're all grouped together. So we're going to go ahead and do a split. And you'll see here that we've got the two cheeks are now separated, but we can actually put those together. So we're going to go ahead and join those two. But I wanted to make sure that we had everything else uh, separated uh, according to the cut layer. So now what we're going to do is we're going to apply a texture to each one of these shadow layers. Now the way that I'm going to do that is with digital paper. There's a lot of um, places online where you can get digital paper. Uh, Lettering Delights is one of my favorite sources for it. And um, right now, we're actually, I've got my Adobe Photoshop Elements 8.0 on, and you'll see that I have a piece of digital paper up here. And this is from the Hello Friend background paper pack from Lettering Delights. Now, when we import a digital paper into Make the Cut, we have to actually reduce the size of it because otherwise it just bogs down your computer and you can't really work with it at all. And it was recommended that your sizes be, and this is by pixels, not by inches, pixels, um, they could be 128 by 128, 256 by 256, and they said at most 512 by 512. So if I go to my image resize screen, you're going to see here that this piece of 12 by 12 paper is 3600 pixels. And that's quite a, quite a bit different than the 512 that is recommended. But what's really cool about that is that by using a photo editing software like this is that we can change that. So I'm going to go ahead and type in 512, and because I have my um, constraint proportions box checked, which is right here, it automatically changes the height for me. And we're going to go ahead and select OK. Now you'll see that we have this much smaller file here, but we're going to go ahead and keep that, and I'm going to do a Save As. And when I do this, I usually save it um, and put the word Texture after it. 
You also want to make sure that you're saving it as a JPEG. Uh, especially with Adobe Photoshop Elements, they tend to want to save it as a PSD file, which is their proprietary format file. So just select from this drop down box your JPEG and then you can save it. But I always put the word texture after it so that way I know I've resized it to be a texture in Make the Cut. So we'll go ahead and save that. And I also, when I do this, is I kind of bump up the quality of it. I like to keep it around 10. Um, and I so far I haven't had a problem working with that in Make the Cut at all. So I'm sure if I'm bringing in like 10. 12 different digital papers it might be an issue but so far I haven't had that yet now by looking over if we turn on our default layers we can see which um, piece is going to be going with what cut so that flower paper I'm actually going to use for this one right here that has the face cut out on it I'm going to turn off those cut files again and I'm going to do a right mouse click here and select change color texture and then select texture and then from here I can select what I want to use and hit open. Now you'll see that this comes in and you can actually see with this particular piece of paper where there's the lines here um, for where it was resized. One of the cool things about this here is the scale. Right now this is at 100% but we can actually increase our scale so that we can kind of get rid of some of those lines and actually make the file a little bit bigger so that it will fit in the cut file that we want to have and it doesn't look too weird. So we're going to go ahead and select OK and I'm just going to switch over to my contrast mat here so that you can see that my digital paper now is in that shadow layer. And now I'm going to go ahead and do this process again with another um, digital paper that I've already scaled down for us. So that's change color texture, select texture, and we're going to choose texture from file. And I'm using this one right here. This one kind of has a bit of a wood grain look to it. And I'm going to increase the scale on this a little bit more too. And select OK. Now for these other two, I'm actually going to just fill them in with a solid color. So if we go to change color texture, select color, you can see that this one already is filled in with black, which is the color that I want there for that. But on these little cheeks, I'm going to change these to a soft uh, pink color. So probably something like that. Maybe I'll even, you can kind of adjust doing things like that too. I think that's a little bit better. So we've got those all settled, settled now. So now that we've got all of our shadow layers filled in here the way that we want, I'm going to go ahead and print these out um, to my printer and I'll be back in a little bit to show you the next steps. Okay, so I've got my printed layer all printed up from uh, my printer. And now what i got to do is i got to prepare it so that it can be cut. Now since I printed on an 8.5 by 11 piece of paper and I need to use the tray mode to get the settings correct to do this on the eCraft, what I actually have to do is I have to use a piece of 12 by 12 as a stabilizer. Now the easiest way to do that is since your mat is lined up where this piece of paper is in your it will be, well, it would be like this for you. It would be your top left hand corner. You want to make sure to line your paper up like that, and then we're just going to use a little bit of removable adhesive to adhere it down along the side. And you really don't probably even need to do all the way around, but um, especially the bottom portion, because that's where the tray is grabbing from. You don't want it to get jammed when it's trying to grab your paper. And you want to line this up as best as you can with your cardstock. So now we've got that all nice and down pat there. And I'm going to go ahead and put this in my tray in the e-craft. And I will meet you back at the computer to show you the next step. Okay, so now we're back at the computer. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off my shadow layer and turn on my cut layer. And then I'm going to go ahead and select all these shapes. Oh, I didn't quite get them all because I don't have them all on the screen right. There we go. Go ahead and select all of them. And now I want to apply my offset. 
Now, when I do this, it takes a little, you have to use a little bit of math in order to get it right. But what I usually do, just so I don't make any mistakes and then, you know, you have trouble figuring out exactly where you were, is I'm going to mark down my XY coordinates from right here. And I'm just going to do that right here on a piece of scratch paper. So bear with me. Okay. So now I'm going to get out my handy dandy calculator. Okay, so to calculate my offset here, I'm going to put in my um, X measurements, so the 1.5766, and then I'm going to put in the offset that I had figured out when I was testing out my printing cut, which for me is uh, plus 0.547, oh, see, I made a mistake, 0 0.5470. And then that gives me what my X measurement should be right now. And I'm going to go ahead and jot that down just again so I don't lose anything. And then I'm going to go up to my X and type that in. 2.1236 and hit enter. You have to hit enter. Don't hit tab. Tab will not change any of your measurements. So always remember to use your enter. So now I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing for my Y, but instead of adding, I'm actually subtracting from my Y. So 2.4652 minus 0 0.0625. That is much closer than the X is. So 2.4027. And now again, I'm going to go ahead and enter that in my Y coordinates. And this is why you want to make sure you have all of them selected at the same time so that they all move at the same time. And if we turn on our shadow layer, you can see now how they're a little bit off, you know. And this is something that has to do right now with, with Make the Cut Beta. I'm hoping that this is something that can re get resolved when the stable version is available so that if we have an offset, maybe it's just a small fraction of an inch so that maybe we don't even have to do this math part of it. But as it stands right now with the beta version of Make the Cut for the eCraft machine, this is what we need to do. And of course, if you're using a different cutting machine, you may not have to do this at all, but you would have to kind of play around and see if you do have any kind of offset. So now I'm going to go ahead and hide the shadow layer again. And I am going to go ahead and get this printed up or cut out in my eCraft, and I will be back to show you the final product. Okay, so now you can see we're all done with our cutting, and I actually I'm glad that this kind of happened. But when my paper was being pulled in the tray, it pulled it in a little bit differently than it normally does, and so you can see that it actually came up pretty darn close to the edge of my shadow layer. And as it was cutting, I was worried that it was going to cut off my digital paper but when I you know all said and done it did work out just fine but this is why you want to use a larger shadow layer you don't want to do anything too thin even though it'll save you a little bit of ink and printing you still don't want to take the chance that you're going to mess up the whole sheet and you're going to have to start over again so um, but you can see how nicely this all printed out and with just one sheet of paper and I'm going to go ahead and put this together into a cute little card, and we'll see you tomorrow. Thanks.